Uh, and, and I'll send all these slides to everyone too as well. So um, as we talked a little bit already, you know, COVID had a huge impact on our uh, student learning. Um, and in particular, when you're looking at um, quantitative reasoning or math, and, uh, and I know when our students are coming in, their ability to be successful in math has a correlation with their success in college. So, you know, they've characterized this um, impact of COVID on math as learning loss. And so how can we, you know, really enable these students to be successful and accelerate their learning now that they're our students, right? Um, you know, what, what happened as their juniors and seniors in high school now be, impacts us when, when they become our students. So, so this is really what's, you know, what was driving us to think about how can we use um, affordable learning solutions that are going to enable our students to be more successful and, and asking these questions of, you know, what can we do to help them achieve these these skills that are going to be important, not only in school, but being able to have the quantitative reasoning skills to think through, you know, financial decisions, to think through um, esports decisions, okay, if we were right, all these probabilities issues and stuff along those lines, and how do we assess it in a way that is, uh, I'll say, helps reduce some of the burden on the faculty, but also brings students assessing their own knowledge in, in a very explicit way so they can develop those metacognitive skills and be successful. And of course, as, as you all know, I, I've been pushing affordability as such a critical issue because if students don't have access to the content and curriculum, how can we expect them to learn effectively? So, so these are some of the kind of the issues about what we need to try to address here. And, um, and, and this is where um, looking at uh, Merlot with a lot of the resources that we have and what intellectus can bring to the table um, in, uh, could be part of this affordable learning solutions. And, and I'll say part of this learning solution idea here is that many times the quantitative reasoning general education requirements have been um, specific to just um, college level um, algebra. And what institutions have done over time is, has expanded it to uh, statistics, including statistics as that quantitative reasoning. And, and I, I, I wanna applaud that, applaud that. And I think the statistics strategy for developing quantitative reasoning is, I think, a more relevant and powerful as a learning experience. And so, th so that's why we kind of put together this, this approach to say, and now I'll just say statistics is still a problem that students have in passing those classes. So how can we help them really be successful? So when we look about um, for our students, helping them develop their analytic problem solving skills with all the support services, the scaffolding that helps them make all those little decisions that that gets them on the right path of quantitative reasoning and and produce models of how to solve these things, show them examples. So so th so these are some of the things that um, we think are really important for students, for faculty, is kind of how do we reduce some of that burden of all that interaction, that practice that students need to have and how you can automate some of that and provide that when students need it. And that, as I said, for the institutions, saving their money. And, and just to you know, all this stuff that, that I'm kind of zipping through here is, um, I also put it up on, on a website here. So this is part of what we call an innovation project and uh, affordable learning innovation project. And so here, this is the background is around, um, you know, why we're doing this project, you know, using statistics as an affordable learning solution. And often statistics, as Jim said, you know, engages with some of these technologies that are really challenging to use for our students. SPSS can be a real difficult application 
when you have a semester when you're trying to learn technology and not become uh, and not become a computer programmer. So so this is why I looked at uh, intellectual statistics. And on the right hand side is kind of how we you know how we think we can run this program, and we'll we'll talk more about it on the website too. You know, I just we put information about. Um, what is this software project? And then, and then more background about the learning loss. So I have some links to the evidence about learning loss in K-12, um, also how statistics can be very effective in, in, a in satisfying quantitative reasoning, gen ed, et cetera, like that, okay? So mm -hmm. um, just so you know, as we're just going through all this, um, I just wanted to make sure, um, to know that we've thought a lot about this and just trying to provide some, some background here. So, um, all right, now, so, so the purpose that we have is to help your students succeed and accelerate their learning in the quantitative reasoning skills through the use of statistics. Um, and before we get going on this, right, um, we, you know, you are the people who would have to try to implement this to say, you know, is this really going to work? How can this fit into an online course, a blended course? Um, how can it really be integrated into uh, our, you know, uh, lower division, uh, you know, math stat courses or psychology courses or sociology or health or whatever it might be, okay? So the first step is, this is about you sharing your opinions, and what you think, whether this could really work on your campus. And let us know the pluses and the minuses. Hey, Jerry, that sounds great. No, ah, you know, that's a problem. And then, then the, the next part would be, if you think it might be useful, would you think about it, you know, trying to pilot some of this in the spring? Is, you know, we, we can do something, you know, little pieces, summer and fall could be larger. So, so let me stop there just to, um, see if you have any questions about what we want to do right now on this webinar here. Does it sound okay? Jerry, I'd go back to this slide earlier too, after after people put in, but but please go ahead first. Uh, other other folks. So um, so like, are, are you finding this this issue of? Um, students' quantitative reasoning skills being a challenge on your campus? And that goes without saying. <laughs> okay. All right. And 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 Veronica at Southern or Afua, do you? I'm gonna ask Dr. Hart to uh, respond because she actually teach the course. Okay. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Um, uh, yes, uh, being that um, I'm teaching psychological psychological statistics, I think that this may be beneficial for me as well, not even just uh, students, but it might be um, something that can go hand in hand for faculty and for the students as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm very interested to maybe get some hands on with this. Great, great. And, and that's what we're going to do next here is uh, Jim is going to show you kind of what this actually is, and uh, and just so you know, um, the um, I you know when I saw this, I'm I'm thinking, boy, this would make my life as a researcher a whole lot easier too. I'll tell you. So, um, uh, and and Jim, did you want to say anything before we move well, on? I I just wanted to say with respect to this slide that I think there's three takeaways from this presentation, which is we want you to take away that we, we want students to achieve. We want the idea that with that achievement, there's an assessment of that achievement so that there's scholarship opportunities for faculty and that we're adding the affordability piece and doing our part to, to reduce that gap. So I wanted to highlight the achievement, assessment and affordability of this innovation project and so great Th thanks jim yeah all right 
So, um, so now what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing and, uh, and I'll, I'll pass it off to, to Jim here. Right. So, okay. Everyone can see my screen here. Yep. Okay. So this was one of the uh, web pages that Jerry just showed us, and this will talk a little bit about, you know, who we are. And so this, this tool and this course, uh, and the training has really come out of 25 years of experience from ground up from what students and faculty really need. So it wasn't a really a top down that's designed for everybody. It's really designed for those community colleges, undergrads and professional students. That's the market for this, this product. And the tool was built with that in mind. The courses, um, going along that same vein is really mostly conceptually based. I mean, if I had my druthers, when students leave, they have some analytic framework in their brain of saying, oh, I could test different things. And I have some sense of the different tests I can use to assess that. That could be used in lots of different things. It's a way of thinking that I hope that they get. And if they satisfy their math requirement, great. If they could actually do so, some stats, you know, five years from now, great. But I want them to think differently, I think is the real essence of what we're trying to convey here. So to practice in that mode of thinking, you know, we have several different modules with lessons built into those. And the modules are going to cover things like what are the concepts around descriptive statistics or t-tests, and then have them do some math. It's not we didn't put in regression math, but we put in other basic math to satisfy that requirement, but also get them to think and be more fluid analytically. We talk about the tool, which I'll show you in a moment. Both the tool and the course comes with free faculty training. So we want that um, to be assimilated um, very seamlessly and introduced, adopted seamlessly. And me and Melissa uh, and Jerry will make that happen. And we have lots of other built-in things like videos and so forth, but I, I okay. So um, the tool is easy to use. The course, both of those are online, by the way. So um, students can access some, some access them from anywhere. I spoke with a um, faculty member earlier today. They're like, well. We kind of have some, you know, online and students really have to go buy it themselves, um, you know, and so forth. So here you can access it from as long as you have a URL. Okay. The This is one module, okay, called T-Test module, and you can see what's in that module. So there's an introduction and the layout was, again, give them the concepts, show them the assumptions of the assumptions in general, and then slot in those assumptions into the module and have them be proficient at actually doing things like conducting an independent sample t-test, being able to interpret that, being able to understand the assumptions and then present it. Half it's doing it, half it's presenting the doing. So we really support uh, both of those. And you can see for a one sample t-test, and just to give you a flavor of this thing, you know, so we've made it not overly text heavy. We want it to be engaging um, and interactive. There's assumptions. So it's this kind of business. And it takes, um, I would say, for this particular module, you know, an hour and a half or so. Okay. I would also highlight that there are knowledge checks throughout. So students are taking knowledge checks throughout. And then as a summary quiz at the end, and that summary quiz will go to your grade book. So that's so it's a competency-based course. There's also uh, calculations, again, simple calculations to conduct a one sample t-test. And then we go through step by step how to actually do that. Yeah. And if I could jump in here, I think this, th this aspect of explaining in a non-overwhelming way 
and then showing modeling step by step how you can complete this analysis at a student's pace, right? Um, when they can do it online and go back and forth and, and, and learn it at the speed and rate that they want actually will help accelerate the learning for them versus when, you know, I used to teach stat two in psychology. And when you have 30 students, 40 students in the class and you're going through the same pace, you know, it's like 10% of the students probably are on top and some people are going faster than you, some people are going slower than you, and it's hard for, for them all to follow step by step through. So that that this is one of the aspects that I thought was really helpful. And those knowledge checks as a faculty member, it 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 helps kind of embed assessment in a much more regular way so the students can know and have I learned it by checking themselves, not just what I have to do, uh, you know, as a faculty there. So and before I go off into the tool, thank you. Before I go off into the tool, I would like to say that the course comes with the course behind your learning management system. It comes with an ebook for each module. Those modules are customizable. If you only want five of them, not seven of them, you get those. It also comes with a PowerPoint deck and um, syllabus to modify and the training. So there's a lot of faculty resources that come with the, uh, with the course itself. Okay, that's the course. The tool. The tool is also web-based. Data can be uploaded from different file formats or entered in or pasted in, or what complements the course is the numerous example data sets built in. Okay. Once the data is uploaded, um, I have a simple data set open here. Students can learn to manage data. Students can learn to plot data and to visualize it. I have a six and a seven year old. There's a different kind of math out there in the world as we all probably <laughs> know. And that different math is they want them to visualize it, just not memorize it. They want them to see it so they can actually concretize it in their brain in different ways than we did perhaps of just memorizing things. So um, so visualization is part of this. And um, I'll just share a quick profile plot. This would be an enormously helpful plot if you're doing a two-way ANOVA between, um, between uh, sex and over time for pre-test, post-test to be able to see in one snapshot what's happening. Ah, females are doing better than males. People at post-test are doing better than pre-test. So the visualization components are, are, are very helpful. And that is in fact, one of the modules, these different, um, um, th these uh, eight different, um, excuse me, 10 different uh, plots. Okay. And and Jim, yeah, before you go on, and just the, so one of the things when I look at this as a faculty member who used to teach us, one, having data sets available of all different topics that I can bring and I can say, oh, what's relevant for my students, right? And, and it could be, and you know, you see all these different possibilities that then you can contextualize for your own students there. And it just, you know, it just takes a burden off of me as a faculty member. And it also allows students to explore lots of other data sets that might be interesting, right? Whether you're in, in biology or, or psychology or technology or education or whatever it might be. So, um, so that I just wanted to highlight, you know, that aspect. And again, coming back to learning solutions, empowering the students to learn to have that mindset, as Jim was talking about, I thought it was really useful. Okay. Sorry, Jim, I didn't mean to interrupt you again, but. The Jerry, this is how we do it. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> uploading data, managing data, visualizing data. So the analysis, it, it, it's a very robust tool that we can really do things from descriptive statistics to structural equation modeling. In this context, students will certainly want to know about descriptive statistics. They'll wanna know about 
a regular correlation. So when they read the newspaper and say there's a relationship between A and B, they'll be able to say, oh, I know what that means and have some other elaborative, elaborated knowledge about that. Um, learn how to do Z tests and T tests and uh, maybe tests of proportions and other things. And certainly maybe non-parametrics like chi-squares. So there's definitely uh, in all of those uh, modules are there, all the lessons are there, and the um, with the auto grading and with the uh, practice uh, math as well. So, and I'll just run a few of them to give you a, a flavor and also to highlight the distinction between what we've all grown up with, okay, which has been raw output, <laughs> okay. So, for and, all and, these different and, and Jim, real quick. And so when you rolled over descriptives, right, uh, oh, right, just so people see, you have this embedded, you know, definitions. So if if you forget, because a lot of terms in in stat are new for people, right, and um, and so you have this context specific help that when I need to know what the heck is that, or if I if you roll over Cronbach's alpha, right. It gives you a definition of what that is, right? It tests, it tells you these because that's where people start forgetting. And the, again, learning solutions is helping students learn in the context that you're giving them. So, sorry, Jay, I just wanted uh, to. Help. No, I, you I know, jump in. Like, you're good. Yeah. We're good. Okay. Terrific. For all of these uh, different tests, basically, we're selecting the test, we're putting in the variables and hitting calculate. The difference between this tool and every other tool is you can see things are in plain English. Okay. So it's modeling um, how to report things like descriptives here. So here, um, for those that are in education or psychology or healthcare, um, APA 7 is the format. So we're kind of introducing them to some of that APA formatted tables. And one of the things that the tool has is an auto drafting technology. So what it's doing is it's going into the table and auto drafting what those findings are. And that's very different than raw output. For the scale variables, we have an APA table. Um, as Jerry mentioned about in terms of embedded definitions, we also have embedded definitions within the output that can also show and explain to students what these different terms and symbols indicate. I'll go one more. Pair T test. Again, I'll select the variables. And, and as you can see, you don't need to program, right? I, I can't tell you how many in learning SPSS and BMDP and SAS, you know, you spend your time here, but here it's, you know, you know, click buttons that gives you choices. And one of the things nice is. Um, the tool will only give you choices to do analyses that are appropriate for the data that you have, if it's nominal, ordinal, or interval type stuff. So it really helpful right. there. So that's right. So it streamlines the type of analysis and makes it harder to make a mistake. And also, you know, Jerry mentioned the scrollovers on the analysis. I've mentioned the scrollovers in the tables. We also have embedded videos at every step of the way to help students um, have a quick three minute how to video. So, okay, so, um, and students as they work through the course, they're gonna be, there's a lot of um, hands on of conduct this test, what does it mean and so forth. So there's that little math piece, there's the actual understanding conceptually and then the doing piece and presenting. So when we conduct a paired T test, looking at differences between pre and post, for all of these tests, the assumptions are built in. It's defining what the assumptions are. It's introducing the students to the type of test. The tool then runs the test and the tool ensures that the student is accurately interpreting what a non-significant test result indicates. And holistically, it's showing them how I would report on an assumption 
of a test as simple as a t-test jerry please yeah and and so so th this this is something that really got me excited here is that you know students have you know when they come into the class they haven't done any of this stuff in their entire life statistics so creating models that help them understand what they need to do and they can do all different types of models using different data sets and over time they begin to see that there's that there is a structure there's not a mystery to how statistics works right that that there's a way of reporting this and they can learn it too but when they don't have good models then they're kind of all over the place right and they're struggling so so this is really one um being able to generate natural you know natural language descriptions of what a test means so they can read through and say oh that's what i tested oh this is what it means and then the other aspect presenting it in apa format was like oh my goodness right so so it gives them a model and then as a teacher you then can ask say all right now let's take the next step now how do you interpret the meaning of this data that's what you can spend your time on and not all the mechanics of programming or you know figuring out how do you put a graph together because it does a lot of this for you and the implications of it right i mean part of it is seeing hey gosh my intervention worked whatever that is from pre to post test but now i can think about what's the implications theoretical or, or practical as well so just moving on down the path from after the assumptions then we have the results so it is stating clearly there was significant differences there apa table introducing them to that introducing them to the appropriate plot with helpful scroll over to help interpret that plot and helpful scroll overs as well so it's familiarizing these students with this pair t test in this case then when you download let's just say that's everything we want to do so once we have the oops once we have the analysis we want you know students can then edit this okay and say well here's my descriptives frequency here's my pair t test okay it even comes with built-in references should they go on and use it for a project as an undergrad or grad okay um then we also embed a glossary that's curated to the tests that were um, conducted so here i conducted descriptives and a t test okay so i have a curated glossary for that that's all included i also have a way of um, adding notes at the individual level so the couple of things so i just want to highlight two ways of leaving notes one at the i can leave notes at the test level like you may ask the student put this in your own voice and put that into the note i also could have notes at the project level where i could also ask general questions yeah veronica oh no um i just hate this wasn't around when i was working on my doctorate <laughs> You know, right. I was I was going to ask Veronica. <laughs> I was going to ask for a show of hands of of who said that thought because I just had that thought a minute ago, and it comes up very often, right? So, so, so what the what the online tool is offering is an easy way to enter or upload data, to manage data, to graph visualize data, to conduct analyses, and two ways of having the notes then what the tool also offers is a quick way of sharing those five things with faculty so by just putting in student and faculty i can share and that whole project goes to you okay live so you can now comment and look at their notes and so forth so um we we have for the tools part kind of a complete built-in package and 
ways of collaborating around those uh, assets. And here's an example of some data that's been shared. And you can see, ah, this individual added four new plots, OK? So you can see if they added notes and so forth. So um, and by the way, when you share, if I was sharing with Jerry, he would get an email, Jim wants to share a project with you. And then he would get notified to accept or decline. And then I would get notified whether he accepts or decline. So there's collaboration built in and a communication around that collaboration. So just to, to highlight some of that. And I, I think from this point, I, I think I'll just stop there for a moment, Jerry. Yeah. And, and just to sum up here, I'll, I'll just say, remember what we're, when I looked at this, and, and I've been working with Jim and Melissa for a little while on this too, as well as, is that this is a learning solution, right? And, and Veronica, I agree, our grad students who are trying to get through their degrees, really helpful. And our undergraduates too. And, and you can simplify these things down where they can begin to have a tool that can stick with them throughout their careers, right? Um, and 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 the modeling that that's what I think is so valuable. Uh, the easy way for you to understand and learn, and to be able to generate like a word document that has the findings of my results section. It doesn't have the interpretation because the computer can't do that. That's your job, but it, it has a way to model how to represent statistical findings that just can ease a burden off the student and the faculty member big time. And I think can really help, you know, students learn more successfully. So, so that's the, you know, ho hopefully you got a good um, sense of the, um, of what the tool is. And then what, what we want to do, you know, now really is just to say, uh, oh, and just to let you know, uh, let me get this next thing here what so the affordability right now for um you know uh, for a semester for the training the course and everything it's affordable like under 30 bucks but one of the things that that we're going to look at is if you would like to pilot it you know we're going to a cut it down to under ten dollars for a student to be able to use. And this substitutes for the textbook, the course right. materials and the software. So, so let's make it the affordable learning. And, and, and I'll just say, um, you know, let us know if that's doable. And, and if it's, if you have challenges, let me know and we can figure out a way if you really wanna use it, for example, you know, uh, Angelica, if you say, boy, this could help me and what I'm doing it, you would have it free, right? For, for you, for your students, you know, if you say, ah, oh, you know what, 10 bucks is, you know, right now is tough on our students um, in because they already have a book, whatever it might be, talk to me. And then Merlot can look at what we can do to help make that um, more affordable for your students. All right. That sounds good. All right. And if you feel that it's too inexpensive, give us that feedback too. Okay. <laughs> you don't often hear that, but it, but people do have said over time, it's way too, you know, we really want your, you know, intimate feedback that you may say, look, 10 bucks is too damn cheap. They can't even rent the book for that. Or the whole package, you know, I kind of mean that seriously that, hey, you know what? The value should be around $35, not $30, $29 or whatever. So, you know, at some level, it could go the other way as well. Um, yeah. I'm really testing that out. So, uh, right. Melissa's laughing inside at me. She's saying, Jim, what are you possibly thinking? But it's true that, um, you know, we're, 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 we're here testing the water and, um, and, and, and want your feedback on it, including the price. Right. Um, so I have, a, I have a couple questions. Sure. The twenty nine. Let me go back to the picture. You get a picture of twenty nine ninety nine and nine fifty. So that's for the semester. Correct. So, okay, they won't be able to utilize this material. 
past past the semester, right? Or will they always have access to that specific course that the professor bought or that they bought? So they, they only will have access to it for that semester. Um, yes and no. So they'll have access to the, well, I'll give you one use case. One use case is the students are buying it, faculty getting the course and the tool for free. The student is getting it for six months, okay? The tool and the course. But in that offering, there's an ebook for every module. So they'll taking home that ebook with them. Okay. So that they have access. So they'll have all of the materials that are in the course is presented in that ebook. And I'm completely comfortable with faculty sharing the PowerPoint as well. So they'll take that with them as well. Right. Okay. Right. So, so yeah. So a four. Yeah. That that that's the, you know the. Um, you have the the ability to take that content for those materials, and then um, uh, and that that just comes with you. So so that's the um, you know the real affordability, the free stuff in a sense. You're paying for it, but then you have it for as long as you want. Okay, okay. And then if so, let's say if I wanted to do. Or let's say John Jock wanted to do a webinar at Edward Waters for his faculty members. Um, do we have to literally invite you guys back or is there a tool or website that we can show them and then we send you the um, the teachers that would like to use this tool or how will we go about that for it? So, um, so, so for part sharing of the, it with other faculty members. So part of the commitment piece, if there's a slide for that, of your of your commitment is Thank you. Which is to attend two training webinars. If you want the trainers just to attend, that's fine. If you want the trainers as well as faculty to attend, that's great. But what we want to do is to make sure it's you know fully seamless on your side. So at least the trainers, but if you want to do the trainers training the faculty that you have a more intimate relationship, that's fine. If you want us to be part of that, we'd be happy to do that as well. Okay, thank you. Um, and then whenever you get the, hold on, you said sign up. So the dates for those two training webinars, do we just- um, We don't have those yet. We can, we, can, we can work around your um, your calendar. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yep, our pleasure. Yeah, and, and all these, again, as Jim said, we're, we're testing the waters on this stuff. So if you say, Oh, you know what? Um, having us identify people by January fifteenth isn't going to happen because they come back on January twenty third, right? Then let us know um, uh, if uh, if if you know the the issue of training. Um, you know how would you like those conducted? We're 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 flexible on how that you know uh, how that works. Um, if you say you know what. I, I can give you two faculty members. Okay, that's okay, right? You know, um, you know, and and it might be. And the other thing about this is that um, the spring semester, you know, getting early feedback would be great. But someone doesn't ha doesn't have to redo their entire course right now, right? Um, you know, they might say, oh, maybe I'll just take when I get to t tests. Oh, my students have, they get confused about that. And so maybe I'll just bring the module for T-tests in for that or, or ANOVAs or whatever it might be along those lines. Um, so they have that flexibility. And that, that's why the price is down to 950 is, you know, we don't know how people are going to use it and how long they're going to use it. Um, and, uh, but, you know, again, this is our, our first, first cut at this. And and just to remind you what Jim said too, is faculty have free access to this. When they be, when they adopt it for teaching, they can use it for all their all the, all their purposes, for their research, whatever else they want to do. It's their tool for to use. Okay. Um, do they have bulk pricing? So let's say if a lot of our faculty members would like to use it, or we can all, all um, you know, we can all make the, um already see that, hey, this is gonna be beneficial. To our faculty members, is there like a bulk price that we could um, 
get it, get, you know what I mean? Yep. Yep. Like after Melissa, 20 faculty members could the price be brought down. Yep. Melissa, do you want to speak to that uh, pricing? Um, you want me to go with our general? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So we typically deal with um, either faculty or, or graduate students, but we do have bulk pricing. Um, I'm just going to pull it up. Sorry, I wasn't ready with that. So as she's looking, it, so this is like an institutional license right, right. that would allow any faculty and students to use it if you pay that institutional license. And are they all, are you all at undergrad institutions or are there grads there as well? We're grad as well. You're grad as well, okay. Yes. Um, do you want me to share my screen to show it or? Sure. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll stop sharing so you can do it. So these are our typical tiers for the open access. I know there's a lot of them. So what open access means is the tool goes behind your um, LMS with a single sign-on. Everyone in the whole institution can access it. The course goes behind your LMS. You can use that as many times, which means zero cost book text, zero cost textbooks to everybody. So with these tiers, it includes the course, it includes the training, it includes the tool. Okay. So this is typically for the, um, for grads. So I think we'd have to figure out a more nuanced grad undergrad um how many of this is work for a second here how, how many students in fact are in your institution if i'm if you roughly we have um about nine thousand students okay um, maybe an additional oh. 1500 uh, to 2000 faculty members okay so um so let's just call it you know ten thousand so you're at about 20, 2250 a piece. Is that am I doing that math right? Um 10,000 or two dollars and twenty-five cents each. I think if I'm doing my math right, right? Right? 20, 20, 20, 2250. Let's <laughs> just say this. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, 10,000. Sorry. 10,000. So three dollars and fifteen cents per user. We're in the 10,000. Melissa, if you could highlight that. That's the, the 10,000, 7,000, 10,000 tier. So, you know, if you, right, if you had, if you had 10,000 people in your whole institution, right, right, you're, 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 you're at $3 and 15 cents. But uh, Jim, if I can ask, that, right? if, you know, every student you know, doesn't take statistics. Right, right, right. right. We had to, we had to, right. Some people are into art or art history, and right. So, right. but right, right, so right. I mean, yeah. And we're happy to figure out, hey, how many folks are actually using it and navigate right. that. But at the moment, it's you know how many. What is that capacity? Or maybe it's yeah. half of that to say, look, we'll come in and say you have really five thousand using it, and then we'll assess at the end of the year. Hey, gosh, you only get four thousand use it, or gosh, you really had seven thousand using it. So that that so we can scale that to what's actually happening, and you know, give us the best guess, and then we'll figure out. It might be let's just say for you know, fifty percent of the folks would 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 be interested in something of this sort. Right, right. And then up and lower it the, the following year based on that. Right. So even if it was worst case, right? We said three dollars and fifteen cents. Now it's six dollars and thirty cents. Well, that's still a heck of a lot better than twenty nine dollars and fifty cents. Right. And you know what, Afua? Yeah. You know, I, I had to manage um, some contracts, and SPSS is like a whole lot more than this, right? So, yes. uh, so, so that's that's one of the things you can say. You know, this is a use, and and again, I'm just talking among friends here, right? 
yeah. um, is this is a whole lot more usable, powerful, and a whole lot less expensive. So why am I paying for SPSS? And and we know why because there's a history. There's people use it. That's what they learned. But the, you know that's something to really look at. Is you know you can save money. Uh, by using this instead of SPSS type stuff up, you know, so. Yeah, I, I understand. It's like, I don't understand because SPSS is free at TSU, but I fully understand what you, which, um, you know, what do you mean? Because just in general, a product that they may be using outside of SPSS, it probably costs way more than $29.99. Yeah, but the, you know, but your campus is paying it, right? So right. someone is paying it. Yes. And so if you said, hey, listen, you know, I, I you know, because those are the conversations I used to have is as, you know, wouldn't you like something less, more affordable? And then if you pay for this, then you have extra money to do whatever else you want, right? Yes, <laughs> yeah. very true, very true. You know, so, but anyway, I uh, I, I didn't want to get too much tied right. into Right, some stuff, but, but this is really helpful. I would, like to, I, don't yeah, know if yeah. I would like to go back to the to the pilot cost because we have very few students maybe um, enrolled in our statistic classes, and um, I, the dean is uh, is you know join us, um, uh, Ms. Ms. White on the line, and she actually teaches the class also. And I think it will be something that we'll be interested in, but I would like for her to actually see it maybe at a different time. And I would like to know how long is the training? I know you said two training periods, so is that a, how, how much time the faculty need to invest in learning this system? So we, you know, the, the, the tool is simple in and of itself. The training will be two one hour trainings, but if you wanted more training, you could have more training. Um, but I think at a minimum, um, to be able to get like everything else, you need a proper introduction to it. So I want to give you a proper introduction to it and um, um, let you play around with it and then come back, train, and then answer questions as well. Okay. And so um, after you receive the training, the faculty member that's actually using this tool, how long will they have access to the tool? So they're going to have access ongoing. Okay. Uh, what about how can you use this tool outside of the classroom? Um, it, it's as it's as limitless as your imagination. Okay. okay. And it's I guess I'm asking that question, especially by institutional effectiveness in uh, people. And also, uh, my team run a report every day that we actually manually take Excel spreadsheet and you know. I'm just wondering, can we actually use that in my office? So yes, so so um, so educators are using it, and it's a simpler, you know, visualization and analysis tool. Just to even run descriptives and have that downloaded report in in a, in a Word document. You won't need all the references and everything else, but you'll have a nice set of tables and nice description of those tables already formatted in Word. So absolutely. Okay, so I would need to talk to my colleagues because we, uh, the faculty actually is finishing, or has finished, uh, but to see if there's anything possible, maybe we can uh, uh, schedule a training, you know, within a couple of days or yep. coming back, you know, uh, in January, but I really, um, would like for them to see it. I hate. Are you guys going to demonstrate this at another time? Because I really would like for Miss White to see it, and I, I think she would be excited about it. Melissa, you just want to send uh, Veronica my calendar. Yeah, we're happy to just mm -hmm. do another yeah. session. I'll send that to you. And then let that fit into your into your you and Mrs. White's uh, calendar. You send it to me as well, please. Yep. Great. And yeah, sorry for my tardiness. No, no problem, Vanessa. And 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 Veronica, what you just described as how you can use this tool as an academic administrative tool is wonderful, right? And so um, 
you know, uh, and being able to, this to be a case study about how to streamline administrative decisions where you have evidence-based decision-making using a statistical tool that can really help present the data so people make informed decisions. I, I, I think that that's a wonderful thought. And, and you could say, how does it save you time? And all that other stuff would be great. So uh, um, and so, if you need any help on that, you can count on me to support you too. Okay. Well, I need help. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. And I'm so, happy to, and I'm happy to support with the training on the tool for you yeah. for sure. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, great. Thank you all. Yeah. All well, right. We can have a um have a webinar during the spring semester, so we can invite all the HBCUs to it. Yeah. Yep. So we're so, planning. So we're planning, and I think Jerry, you said February or March. February, February March. Okay. So we'll, yeah. let's we'll, we'll get some dates sent out, and then this way we can really um, uh, introduce it to to everyone and, and invite other folks as well. Um, but you know, um, I think it's yeah Fe February or March. We'll 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 get you dates. Yeah. And thank you for sharing that as well. Yeah. So, so the bottom line, you, you think this is a worthwhile um, project and tool and course? Absolutely. Okay. Yes, yes, absolutely. 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 Like, like you all have stated, I wish I had this for my doctoral program as well. You know, I've taken statistics at the undergrad and the graduate level. And honestly, that first time around, we felt alone. But when we got to the doctorate level, you know, we had developed our own little group. You know, we had a little study group and that's how we pretty much support each other, especially with being online, which is a big, big issue with especially taking these type of courses. So this right here is just like a game changer. This semester, I actually did a psychological research project with my students, of course, using the scientific method and other psych uh, research methods as well. And I wish I had have had this to introduce you know, to introduce this to them, this would have been very intriguing to see, but not only with the students, but I can use this for my personal research. Yep. So I'm very, 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 all capital letters, very intrigued and interested and impressed with this, this software. So I, for one, would love to use it for my site courses. Wonderful. Awesome. Wonderful. And, and you know what, um, Angelica, this is what the other thought we had is, you know, you're, you're you're working with your students and you can see if it how much of a difference it could make and then we can in a sense think of this like a research project too where yes. then you can say this is what it's like in the old way now we use this this innovative technology look at the benefits to the students and then present at a conference right and and we can go to the you know Merlot OLC innovate conference and present at that so you get some scholarship out of this as well as you know right. teaching you know right right absolutely and disseminating those benefits right you know mm -hmm. i mean you know seeing and tweaking and say well you know what, what's really happening but also sharing that information um, yes absolutely this helped me run reports this helped my students and so forth so I, I think you know for the greater good which is the ultimate of that process Yes. And as you mentioned before, in the very beginning, uh, you know, our students are so ill prepared. I asked them, I said, hey, a show of hands, how many of you guys have actually done a research project? Just a, a simple research project. Maybe two students raised their hands. And so they're just at the, I don't know what's happening and at, at you know the high school level when they're juniors and seniors, but somewhere the ball is being dropped because we know at our level that they are just not prepared for college. And they're failing so many courses because of this. So this would be very helpful for those students who are, you know, having you know low scores or weaknesses in these areas. So I'm so, excited. And, and and just to piggyback on that, if in fact they are not doing well in the courses, they may well be a candidate for dropping out. So that retention rate may decline as well, right? Right. Right. So that's so the impact goes all the way through from, hey, I'm not even going to start to, I might not be there in a year. Right. Yeah. Right. 
that, that my, you know, worry for our students is, you know, it, they're coming in less prepared, but we, now that they're students, how can we accelerate their learning so they can be successful? Because they got to make up time and that's, that's really hard to do in education. But it is, you know, at our community uh, level, we have the advantage. So we can kind of pick up the ball from there and get mm -hmm. them prepared for that next level. So, right. yeah. Right. Yep. Is it possible to get a, um, a copy of the PowerPoint so I can go back and look at it? You bet. For some reason, I was thinking this meeting was at three o'clock. So I'm mm -hmm. sorry. I'm like, oh. it's, re it's recorded too. <laughs> okay. Yep. And you'll get the PowerPoint and everyone will get my calendar. Okay. Um, and so the recording, the, my calendar, so we can do training and then PowerPoint. Yep, we'll, we'll get it all. Because, um, and, and here is, you know, th this is, um, uh, and, and enabling the HBCUs to take a lead on this innovation is, you know, kind of fits within our, you know, the Hewlett grant, what we're trying to do is, is push that, you know, the leadership and the engagement um, and uh, forward. So that, that that's another reason why, you know, I really appreciate all your feedback. Um, so so we know if we're going in the right direction on this. Um, so th thank you so, so, so much. Uh, uh, we would like to schedule a training Tuesday morning. <laughs> I have Let's confirmation from my colleagues. Uh, Melissa, why don't we just schedule that right here? All right. Or yeah, yeah, Veronica, what what um do you want them to follow up with the schedule or or do you want them to look at something right now? What what's your preference? We can uh, we're ready. Oh, okay. What's time happening? <laughs> what what time is best for you guys? About 10 o'clock, maybe? Yeah, that sounds fine. I'm I'm open. Miss White. Uh, 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 is it possible to yeah, do eleven? 11, is, is that okay with you guys? Yes, that's, that's fine. I'm, I'm open anytime. 11, 11 it is. 11 o'clock? I, I do an all hands meeting at 10, so I'd have to change about 10 people. So no 11 problem. would be great. It's Tuesday, the 20th, correct? Oh, I'm sorry, Tuesday. Yeah. Either, either, either 11, still 11 would be great if that works for you. That's good. East Coast time? Central. So it's 11. So then 10 o'clock your time. So I, that's, that's fine. That'll, work. It'll be 10 o'clock your time, 11 o'clock our time, and I'll send you a meeting link. Sounds good. Good. All right. And I, I know we, we've gone a little bit over. I apologize. Um, but I just thank you so much. Um, you know, it's... Uh, um your experiences um and the context that you bring about whether this is a valuable tool is is um is so important to us because we, we 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 thought it was a good idea but we're not the people who have to use it and you are and so that so that's why we want to make sure that it can work for you and then if it does we're here to support you you know, all hands on deck for us to make sure you're successful at it, okay? Thank you. All right. Thank you all. Thank yeah. really, thank you all so much for your time and for your interest. And I look forward to the trainings and uh, I look forward to more conversations with you also. I sincerely appreciate everyone's time so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We look forward to seeing you in the spring. Look okay. forward. Okay. Thank bye you bye all. all. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And, and Veronica, a any news? Um, not yet. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Okay. Well, any anything I could do to help, you let me know, okay? Okay. I sure will. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.